Hello, everyone. I wanted to just kind of do a quick uh, introduction to myself, but also this video is going to be for primarily for those students who are unable to make it to the first day of classes due to weather, illness, or whatever the case might be. So I'm going to actually just share my screen. Um, let's see here. And we'll go ahead and jump into this so that it, the video doesn't end up being too long. So my name is David Martin. I am, uh, in addition to teaching this class through Spokane Falls Community College, I am a teaching assistant professor at WSU, uh, teaching uh, composition classes primarily. Uh, I also teach teacher ed classes and uh, uh, other classes as the department needs. So I wanted to go over the syllabus uh, today uh, and uh, give a little bit of an overview of the course. Um, and that we'll do in much more detail when we go to uh, into the classroom on Wednesday. Uh, however, I'm going to give a very quick overview and I'm going to show you where to find that information once we have access to everything. Now, uh, just to be honest, um, because they hired me uh, to teach this class uh, at the end of last semester, I still haven't gotten the HR as of today as a, of this recording, the HR uh, paperwork taken care of. And so therefore, I don't have access to my, the Canvas space yet. So I will, as soon as I get that access, I will make it available to you. And all of this information that I talk about today will be available to you in there. Um, oops. Okay. So let's jump into it. Okay, so the syllabus, let's go and I'm gonna look at, I'm just gonna pull up the syllabus because I've got it here. Um, so the syllabus basically, again, is a kind of, uh, not a contract, but an agreement uh, about what the expectations are for the class uh, and a bunch of information that's relevant to uh, what the class is and what the expectations are. Uh, by the or by the college, uh, as well as by me, and then what you can expect of me. So this English 101 is a foundational course. It kind of gives you the basic building blocks for composition uh, at the community college level in this case. And hopefully, if you continue on at the university of well, any university, uh, these skills will be transferable to there. Uh, we're going to have a series of essays that are going to involve conversations with uh, different kinds of text. Uh, these conversations will be both in class, in person, as well as online uh, and through the uh, assignments that you will produce for the class. Uh, and so the idea is to kind of broaden your understanding or your thought process uh regarding uh you know the things that are of an academic nature so this semester we will and i'll talk about this more in uh detail in a bit uh, but we will be looking at the the topic uh, and the reality of what we call folklore or fairy tales or, or urban uh, mythology or urban myths or urban legends is another term for it and so um I, and we'll go in, again, we'll go into more detail about what that means and why uh, I have chosen that as a theme for the class in a little bit. The goal again is also to solidify learning, uh, to have you reflect on your growth as a thinker, a writer, a uh, reader as well. Um, there are several learning outcomes. So we will, in the course of the assignments, you'll be analyzing text. You'll be composing your own text. Uh, I'll ask you to read critically as a part of the process of understanding the information and then being able to write about it. Um, we will also do a library introduction. We'll talk also about not just what is available through the library, but the process of, of doing research. Um, but again, this is just an introduction. It is not designed to be 
an extensive research project. And so therefore, uh, what I have done is implemented that uh, introduction into the first assignment, which is going to be uh, a, a series of articles that you're going to read and then research for and to identify particular issues that are relevant that you have something to say about as well so that you have some kind of buy into the conversation about that particular issue. Um, you're gonna be using several different writing processes in different assignments. And we'll go over each of those processes uh, as we get to each assignment. Um, but I do want you to be thinking about the choices that you're making when you are writing, to be very conscious of your writing rather than doing it passively. And uh, we'll talk a little bit today about active versus passive reading. And that's also true when you're writing as well. You want to be do using active strategies as opposed to passive strategies. Writing doesn't, isn't something that happens to you. It is something you do. And so it's a matter of producing writing, uh, but you do it through drafts. You do it through brainstorming. You do it through uh, organizing your ideas and then writing uh, a draft. So uh, it, there's a lot that goes into it. And so we're gonna engage in that this semester or this quarter uh, in a fairly extensive way. So there's gonna be a lot of work involved but you're going to get a lot of support throughout the process. So as, uh, and I will probably talk about this a little bit more a couple, multiple times, but if you do have questions throughout any of the, the processes of, for the assignments, then please do make sure that you ask. You're going to have a series of daily tasks. Uh, as, so looking at coursework, you're going to have a series of daily tasks, most of them relevant to the assignments that we're working on. So uh, these are lead up tasks to the major assignment writing assignments. You are going to need to complete these as we go, which means that you're going to need to be present, whether it be physically present in the classroom or present as in you are watching uh, any videos that are uh, uploaded to the Canvas site to, uh, to you know, as part of the uh, explanation of an assignment uh, and you're doing those assignments and getting them submitted. Uh, so the this needs to be, again, an active process for you uh, and not something that you feel uh, is, is optional. It is definitely all these assignments are purposeful and they have been built into the course fabric uh, for a purpose. So please uh, make sure that you're doing them. Uh, I always say this at the beginning of every quarter or every semester, but you're going to get out of this course what you put into the course. Uh, and what you get out of the course may be different than what I have intended for a particular assignment and that's totally okay. Uh, but you are always going to get out of the course what you put into it. So if you put a maximum effort, you're going to learn maximum stuff. It might be different things than I expected you to, to learn, but uh, you are going to learn more. Uh, and that's really the goal of higher education anyways, is to learn, to be able to learn things and apply them later on. And we don't always know what, when or how we are going to apply those things. Uh, it just like when I create an assignment, I don't know how uh, you are going to take that assignment and be able to apply it to other things as well. Uh, all I know is the tasks that are involved and that are required, you know, necessary in order to produce it. Um, you will also be doing discussion board posts. Uh, primarily during weeks two through seven, but you'll have more of those as well. Uh, some of these discussion posts will be discussing articles. Some of them will be peer reviewing papers and others will be doing other kinds of things that are necessary for as the part of the process. Um, so, and I will be engaging, you'll be in small groups in these discussions so you don't have to respond to everyone in the class, but uh, you will also be uh, respond, you know, I will be part of the discussions as well. Um, 
the three major essays that you're going to be looking at are uh, a response to an article that will, you will be identifying. Specifically, it's actually a response to an issue, not an article. Uh, and so I'm going to actually change that. Uh, so an issue, um, then you're also going to be uh, doing a movie review, which is a type of analysis, a very specific type of analysis essay where you define criteria uh, and you define a particular genre of film. You select a film and you use those criteria that you pre-selected uh, and then any other criteria that pop up that become that are a surprise uh, that uh, impact the viewing experience. Uh, and we'll talk again more in detail on that when we get to the assignment. The final writing assignment should be a fun, a fun one. It is, uh, it involves multiple different aspects to the assignment, but it is the narrative remix. Uh, and in the narrative remix, you're going to take a fairy tale, folk tale, urban legend of some sort, and you're going to look at it from a different perspective and retell that story from a different perspective using, you know, uh, many different uh, elements there. Um, I do also, you know, you're gonna need to uh, make sure that you meet the assignment requirements, but I also want you to really focus on making these assignments your own. And so find ways to incorporate your own personal thoughts and experiences and understandings into each of the assignments. And then you're gonna have a final web portfolio and we'll talk about this in much more detail actually fairly early in, this, in the quarter because you're gonna to need to set up your web space uh, for that portfolio. Uh, in essence, you're gonna take two out of the three major assignments that you write uh, as well as some other elements and you're going to put them in a revised version up into your portfolio. Um, in addition to that, you're going to be reflecting on the changes that you've made uh, from the draft and the process that you engaged in in order to get to that assignment. So that and you can read the details of the on that on the syllabus yourself. Um, okay, so grading is going to be maybe different than what you're used to. Um, uh, in essence, you'll get points for the assignments and. Uh, potentially, you could get full points for all of the assignments. Uh, the portfolio might be uh, more of a challenge, but the, you know, with the major assignments, uh, you will need to uh, write and revise to, to the point where that assignment is complete. In other words, it meets all of the essential requirements for that particular assignment. If you get that done on the first draft, that you submit, then great, you get full points for that assignment. Uh, if it takes you a couple drafts in order to get all those different things, there's no, you know, sometimes we just overlook stuff or we're in a hurry um, and to get something submitted. So you will basically resubmit and resubmit until you get a complete. And once you get a complete, you'll get full points for that assignment. Uh, so each of the major assignments are worth 100 points each. Uh, with a total of 300 points for major assignments. The discussion posts are the same. Once you have met my expectations for the discussion post, in other words, you have posted a thoughtful uh, post, you have responded to your peers, you've responded to any questions that I might have had, uh, you didn't do, see it as a one and done type of uh, thing, but you actually saw it as a discussion, which is the intent of it. Uh, once you have met that expectation, then you'll get full points for it. There will be a total of eight of them worth 50 points each. So a total of 400 points possible. Uh, and in, in essence, if you do all of those, you'll get full points for that. There are also going to be several other kind of smaller assignments. These will be worth, you know, five or 10 points each uh, for a total of 100 points. Uh, the final portfolio is going to be worth half of the grade, so 50% of the grade. And at this point, I will say I, it will not be based just on uh, completion. It will be based on to what extent is this meeting the overall standard. And all the standard will be established through the rubrics, that, the individual rubrics for the assignments. 
and those will be available to you from the beginning. Um, so I, I expect you to ask a lot of questions uh, if you have them. Uh, we are gonna have to work quickly and we're gonna have to work hard all the way from day one. So uh, please stay engaged and stay, uh, you know, try to stay motivated as much as you can. One thing I do like about the quarter system is it does go fairly quickly, but one thing I don't like about it is it goes very, very quickly. Uh, and so we have to, we're gonna have to all work hard, including myself. Um, the university policies, uh, academic honesty or dishonesty, however you wanna put that, um, definitely do your own work. Uh, don't cheat. Uh, don't try to pass someone else's work off as yours. I don't think that uh, any other instructors at this point have to use the same assignments that I have. Uh, and so this, you know, other than maybe a response, uh, but uh, I do it a little bit differently. So you need to meet my expectations for the assignments. So for trying to pass off what someone did in the past is not gonna work in that case. Um, the disability, if you have a disability of any kind, uh, make sure that you are contacting the disability access services to make sure that the, those are taken care of. I do expect that you act as adults um, in the classroom and in the discussion posts uh, and throughout the semester. So please uh, uh, interact in an adult-like manner. Don't uh, uh, engage in any kind of uh, behaviors that would make others feel unsafe in the classroom. Uh, uh, try to make, let's try to make this a very inclusive uh, and positive environment so that we can all kind of maybe even have some fun with the assignments because I think that uh, when I've used these assignments in the past, they have actually turned out to be pretty fun for students uh, and for me to watch, uh, you know, or to observe and read and all that. Um, SFCC does offer some free tutoring that I encourage you to use. There's, uh, there will be a link here that you can follow that uh, you can access those uh, services. Uh, right now, if I clicked on it, it wouldn't go anywhere because I personally don't have access to it, but you might have ac you know, access to it. It just, uh, I don't have that until HR gets all their, uh, the pa paperwork taken care of. Um, so community colleges of Spokane is committed to health and safety of uh, students and faculty. Um, there are safety regulations that everyone must follow. Uh, you are also on a WSU campus, so make sure that you are following the safety regulations. Uh, wear a mask when you're in a building, in any of the buildings on campus, uh, and uh, make sure that you're um, doing what you need to do to keep make sure that everyone is uh, that the risk is minimal. If you are sick, stay home, communicate with me and let me know, uh, you know, how long you have to quarantine because I know there's some shifting in, uh, in those, uh, in those guidelines. Uh, and then, you know, what else, you know, of course, if it's not COVID, then uh, then that changes in terms of uh, all the different things. So keep me informed as far as what uh, ex or what the, uh, your health issues or concerns are in that case. Um, so let's see, so now I'm gonna go back to my notes here. So if you have questions about the syllabus, please let me know and uh, email me my email. Currently, I don't have a SFCC email yet. I will hopefully by the end of today, um, but you can email me at drmartin at wsu.edu uh, and I will respond fairly quickly to that, uh, to that email. So as I noted, this semester's theme is folklore, fairy tales, and urban legends. Now I lump all of these in because they're all fairly well related. Uh, they have very, very similar uh, purposes. They have very similar uh, features. And so uh, this allows us the broadest base of understanding uh, and potential issues to explore 
through both research and response in the first uh, assignment. Um, my question for you before we get started with this semester, because we are gonna answer these questions as we go, um, but I want you to be thinking about what is folklore? Um, what does it mean if I say, you know, we are going to explore folklore, uh, what in your mind does that mean? Uh, and you might be surprised at the different ways that we can look at that term uh, or the reality of folklore. Uh, what is the purpose of a fairy tale? Why would we tell fairy tales? Uh, what do we use them for? Uh, what have they historically been used for? What do what have we done with fairy tales now uh, that, um, you know, that is different than in the past? Uh, what are we doing that is similar to the past? Uh, why are urban legends important to understand? You know, and understanding what an urban legend is is also another part of that. So I want you to be thinking about the, you know, these uh, questions here as we go into this next week or so of reading articles and discussing articles. Uh, we, won't, we won't have our first discussion post until I would say next week. Uh, it's on the schedule that I'll show here shortly as well. Um, but uh, yeah, be thinking about what, you know, these questions here and what, uh, what how you would answer them. So, the other thing we're going to talk about today, I'm, uh, I'm going to kind of spend a little bit more time on this, is the idea of responsive or annotative reading. Now, when we read something, uh, we can have many different ways to do it. We can either use active or passive methods for reading. Uh, and most of the time, I would say that we, when we just get started in academic studies, uh, we are reading very passively. I'm guilty of that. I think everyone that I've ever taught in my life, and that's 20 some years of teaching, uh, has started out with a very passive approach to reading. Uh, and when I say passive, that means just, oh, you're reading the words and that's about it. You, you're reading it just because it's an assignment and you're trying to get through it. And by the time you've finished reading, maybe you remember a couple of things, but that's about it. Now, passive reading is also what we do when we're reading for uh, pleasure, right? When we're reading a, a novel or a short story or whatever, that we're reading just for the enjoyment of reading that. It's a passive experience. We're not interacting with it necessarily. We're just reading, right? Uh, active reading, however, is also called responsive or annotative reading. In other words, we are having a conversation with the text in order to um, remember things more, to, uh, to have something to refer back to later. If we're writing a research paper, for example, uh, that's really, really essential that we be reading in such a way that is active and annotative and in a very conversational. And so I've provided a text for you in the course site that I will uh, kind of walk through uh, on the first day of classes. Uh, and I'll kind of refer to it today as well in this video, but um, there's a text by Ede, uh, uh, who is a textbook author, basically. Uh, and uh, in her textbook, she talks about annotations and, the, and the, the kinds of annotations being things that we're highlighting, commenting on, or having questions about. Uh, and so, and that's really what it is. We're creating a dialogue so that our brain can process it and then we can remember more. Um, and so the first consideration that we need to think about is why are we, we reading? What is the purpose for our reading? Because the purpose for our reading determines the extent that we will annotate, uh, whether it be zero or maximum amount of annotation. 
A second consideration here is that each person annotates differently. We all interact in conversations differently, and we do the same thing with textbooks. So some people, he talks about this, uh, will annotate everything. They will, they will highlight. They will, you know, they will basically make comments about just about everything in their text. Others, when they're reading, they're just reading for the main ideas. And so they're only interacting with the main ideas. And so they're highlighting, this is the main thing this author is trying to say. This is the questions that I have about that or these comments I have about it. Um, and the point of this is to really know yourself, know your purpose. Uh, so know yourself and your normal way of interacting within a, a dialogue or a conversation, which is what we're looking at here. Uh, and then know your purpose. So if you're only reading just for pleasure, you don't need to worry about annotation anyways. But if you're reading an academic text and it's just for background knowledge, then you don't have to annotate as much. For, the, for that matter, you don't have to annotate at all. If all you're reading for is background knowledge so that you can go into your class and you know take notes on that based on the lecture. So some professors will use the textbook as the Bible for their lectures, right? So they, they, that textbook gives you the supplemental information, the examples, all of, the, uh, all of that uh, information that you need uh, in order to be successful. And their lectures are based directly on the content from the, the textbook highlighting uh, those key points. And so uh, if that's your purpose to get the background for that understanding that lecture, uh, you can, you know, read it fairly quickly, do the lecture, and then maybe go back and highlight anything or highlight while the, the lecture is going on. However, if you're reading an article for research, you're not, that's, that's a whole different ballgame, because you, at this point, you now have to uh, read that article and try to glean out of that things that are relevant to the questions that you're asking about the issue that you're exploring. So you don't need to highlight everything, but you need to highlight the things that are helpful in understanding uh, more information about that particular issue. So, you know, keep those things in mind. Keep your, your, your own personal uh, way of doing things, your personal preferences, your purpose, and then just make it genuine. Make it a genuine conversation between you and the text. And so the practical, practical application here is that you should use the language you would normally use in a conversation to interact with the text as if it's another person talking directly to you. This means you can use whatever, you know, whatever you do. I don't agree with you. Uh, I don't understand what you're trying to say. Uh, would you explain that more? Or what is, how can I get more explanation? Or all these different things. These are questions that you might ask. Or I totally agree. Or, you know, BS or whatever, you know, expletives you want to use, right? You know, uh, obviously I have to be, you know, kind of careful here. You know, this is a recorded lecture. Um, but, you know, you, you just be, you know, be yourself when you're, re you're annotating uh, and make it an exercise in conversation with uh, the expert or the, the author, even if they're not expert. So other considerations, um, because now we're not just dealing with printed text, right? We have multiple medium uh, mediums for text and multiple devices for which those mediums can work on. We can do it, use our laptop to read the text in a PDF form. Uh, we can go online and read it and you know in a, through a web browser. Uh, we can use a Kindle, um, or we can print off the article and use it printed. Personally, I'm one of those old school guys who you know likes to have that printed article most most of the time. But as we'll see as we get further into the semester, there are truly other ways in order to annotate or to pull the information from an article uh, that are quite, quite a bit more efficient 
than uh, are you know some of the old school ways. Uh, and, uh, and so depending on your purpose, right, uh, you might use some of those other ways in order to do that. One of them is to, you, to create a Google form for collecting the quotes from the, a particular article uh, in order to save them for later and be able to organize them. Right, so doing an initial code for you know what this represents in terms of answering the questions that I'm trying to answer uh, on this topic. So for research, that's a great way to do it. Now, if I were reading it as a textbook for you know a textbook for a class, I wouldn't use that way. I would use the you know I would have generally get the printed textbook and I would write in my textbook and or use sticky notes or whatever, which is another medium for this kind of conversation. Uh, whichever medium and device you use, uh, just make it genuine. Now, here I have provided, and this will also be uploaded into the course site as well, so you can link to it from there, some examples of different kinds of annotations. And it's hard to see on this screen, if I were to uh, expand it, you would see it more. And this PowerPoint will be available in the course site as well. And then here is an example of a piece of text that has been annotated um, uh, in, uh, you know, in a conversational way. Um, and so you have uh, annotations here that are, you know, it's like commentary on a particular point. Uh, there are questions. Uh, there are different kinds of, you know, summary statements uh, or uh, just, you know, in, in general. So the, the, again, there are different ways of commenting on the different texts. Okay, so that's this video for now. I'm gonna try to, you know, close this down uh, and make it uh, as short as I can possibly make it here uh, and then get this uh, ready to go once classes start on Wednesday. Uh, for those of you who are not able to make it. We will be going over this in class. So if you're watching this, it's probably just because you needed a review of what we went over in class. So, um, but, or you were not able to make it on the first day. So uh, what, for whatever reason you're watching this, understand this is just a summary, uh, summarized version of what we're going to do. I will be providing in class a piece of text that we will do a practice annotation on uh, and then you'll be able to share that. So uh, how much of this I will be able to go over in the, in the class in a 50 minute period of time, uh, you know, we'll just see where, so where that goes. Uh, any questions you might have, uh, please direct them uh, again to me. Uh, you can send them to drmartin at wsu.edu. All right. so. I hope we have a good semester, good quarter. Sorry, I keep using semester because there are issues on semesters, but, uh, and uh, I will see you in class, hopefully as soon as you can, can be there.